So here we are, number five from 2010, AP Stats FRQ. Let's take a look at this. It's a significance test that we need to do. If you need the hard copy, you can just Google 2010 FRQ AP Stats and I think it'll show up. I'll give you some time to read the question. Go ahead. So basically you're buying fish from two different places. You wanna see if one fish right here do the data provide convincing evidence? So this means do a test, most likely that the mean length of the adult fish from fish friends, that's uh, which one, this one, these guys is greater, the mean is greater than these guys. Or is, you know, obviously we look at our samples, so you have a greater mean, but what is the likelihood? Do we have evidence that this store right here will give you larger fish than this store? So this is obviously we have to do a significance test. Now things, when I look at this, we're dealing with means. So right there, it's a t-test. So we're doing a t-test. We gotta figure out whether it's match pairs or two sample. And this one's so easy because look, they're not even the same. How's this gonna be matched pairs? Because you have eight in this one and 10. How are you gonna match? There's nothing to match out. These are independent of each other. So this is gonna be a two sample t-test. What I like to do is I always like to go into the calculator and do the test so I know what I'm working with before I write up the problem. So let's go to where it says stats. We go over to test. This is gonna be a two sample t-test. And then we can go over to the stats because they give them to you and you can put it all in. You could also type all those numbers into the lists, but you don't need to. So don't waste time doing that because they, they tell you everything right here. You have eight with a mean of 3.4, standard deviation given. We have 10 here, the mean is 3.46, standard deviation. And we want to know, the way that I've typed it in, is this one down here, larger is this store greater than that store? Is the length from this store greater than the length from that store? So we wanna know if mu two is greater than mu one. Okay, it's not, a, it's not, not equal to, because they're not asking if they're different from each other. They're specifically asking if this one is larger than that one or the other way to think about it is, is the first one less than the second one? We will not pool. We will never pool here in two sample T tests. Let's calculate it. All right, so we're uh, looking at our P value right here is 0.39. That's a super large P value. Let's go back over here. I'm gonna redo the test and draw it because it's always good to have like a visual of it, right? So where'd my t-test go? I think number four, right? I'm just gonna do the same thing again, but go down and hit draw. And when you draw it, ah oh man, my dimensions are off. What, does that ever happen to you? I'm gonna go up to my scatter plots. That one's turned on, turn that thing off. This is probably, for, this is probably a good lesson for everybody, right? Let's try it again. I wanna draw it. So I turn my plot off, now it works. Oh, I also got another line in there. But this is, here's the curve that I get. The, uh, the critical value, or the, the T, what do you call that? The test statistic there, whoo, st stuck deep back in the gray matter. Test statistic here is negative 0.2587. That's what we should get. This is obviously not significant, alpha 0 0.05. So now we have an idea what's going on. Let's write all this up. Okay, getting started here. I did pull that graph over. So you're gonna wanna sketch the graph all nice and fancy. And I always like to tell them what we're interested in. We're interested if the mean length of fish from fish friends is greater than that of by right. So we're gonna let, this is hard to type, but we're gonna let mu of b, we'll say, cause that will be the average length from uh, by right. And then we'll let mu of f represent the mean length. Oh, put an L in there of fish from fish friends. So we need to come up, uh, we, what have we done? We have uh, told what our variables here are that we're using. We have defined them, that's what we're looking for. Brain's, brain's not working today. We need to write up our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, okay. Remember the null is always that there's no difference. So I'm gonna write it like this, that mu of b is equal to mu of f. And that the alternative hypothesis would be that, what are we checking here? We gotta make sure we write this right. That fish friends is greater than by right. So the alternative would be that mu of b is less than mu of f. Or in other words, that fish friends is greater 
than by right. All right, those are our hypotheses. That is one-sided. We will test at, let's write that out. Okay, so forgot what I was doing before, but let's clean this up a little bit. We have our little graph. I wrote down here, um, we're gonna need our degrees of freedom because we wanna label our T distribution, right? And we probably need to say we're gonna do this at 0 0.05. So let's write that. So at alpha equals uh, 0 0.05. Got it, what else do we need? Uh, we need to check before we do this. Look, the sample size is super tiny. It's not large. So central limit theorem and all that kind of stuff. We need to do a little check here to see if this uh, distribution is skewed one way or the other or if there are any outliers. So very quick, I guess I could have put these numbers in from the beginning then, couldn't I have? But the way that you set up here, let's, you know, I'll decide to make a box plot here. So you go to Y equals and you hit enter. And then I put my numbers in L3 and L4. Choose modified box plot because that'll tell you if there's an outlier right there. All right, so you need to make one plot each for uh, by right and fish friends. So here's by right, here's fish friends. And then hitting zoom nine will fix your window real quick. So here, all right, here is the box plot to check for normality. So we wanna sketch that on our graph. Let me put it up there so I can look at it. All right, let me put it right here. So we're gonna make a comment about that too. Okay, so there is not any heavy skew or outliers. I, I, I did a box plot, looks good. So T procedures should be safe. Also, it's stated that the samples are independent and randomly chosen. So those are our conditions. Met it, met it, met it. Good to go. So our two sample t-test yields a test statistic of. Now, if you're not into the formulas, which I'm honestly, I'm not into it. But look, it's right here. So we're gonna actually label that out. So t is gonna equal negative 0 0.25869. And we have a p-value of, that is right here in our calculator. Uh, p-value, I'm not gonna write p equals, because sometimes that equals proportion, right? So p-value equals 0 0.399585. All right, so we need to make a decision here. What do we do? You got two choices. You can either reject an all or fail to reject an all. And remember, if you're less than alpha, then you reject the null. But we are not less, we're not even close to alpha, so we fail to reject the null. So we can write this up with a p-value, oh my goodness, p-value much greater than 0 0.05. You should compare it to alpha. We fail to reject the null. Use those words. There is not evidence, this is context now, there's not evidence that fish friends fish has a greater mean length than by rights. And I always go back to the question, is there convincing evidence that the mean length is greater? So answer the question, there's not evidence. Done, perfect. Now what I wanna do, I mean that should be Pretty good. Now, did I write the formula? No, I did not. But let's go over here to the solution guide and see how it is scored. Uh, the correct answer, uh, what do you got? Test statistic, they tell you, they actually show the formula here. And again, you can Google this solution guide if you ever want to, but the p-value is larger. We got the right p-value. Correct conclusion and context using the result of the, the test statistic. Let's go to the next page here to see some of these little tiny points. Um, you may get full credit if you do an interval. Let's not go down that route, although it is possible to do that. Some notes. Um, if the standard symbols are used for parameters, then the parameter component is considered correct. In other words, you're labeling things correctly. Remember our first statement there, we labeled it. But I used M of B and M of F, and we let each one represent up here what it is. But if you use mu1 and mu2, which we use all the time, right? Because your calculator does it. You must clearly state which one is which. So that's why I always kind of say, why don't you just use use the B and the F. Um, next part. Identifies the correct test procedure by name or by formula. We did by name, so we're good. Checks for independent random samples and normality. We did that, so we're good. We're good with that. Um, I'm not going to get into all of that. Step three: If you calculate the test statistic, if a student provides correct test statistic, 
but shows additional incorrect work, such as the wrong formula, then you have to reduce it. I'm looking for the part that says you don't have to write the formula. It doesn't really say you don't have to explicitly, but as long as you put down the name of the test and you put the test statistic and the p-value, then you're good to go. Good, just double checking. Okay, I'm thinking out loud, I'm reading. You should read it too. And then lastly, you need to make that context statement. Linkage between the p-value and the conclusion. Because the p-value is not less than 0 0.05. Did we write that? With a p-value much greater than 0 0.05. There you go. We failed to reject it all. There you go. That is number five. That is a classic two-sample t-test with fish. Good luck in your AP stats test.